I'm also just thrilled to be back with y'all. Y'all, EDAA is where I sort of cut my teeth when I first got to work at the Alabama Development Office. Y'all remember way back yonder when? <laughs> we started with the Prepared Cities program and one thing or another, but EDAA has been active for a long time and I just love to come to EDAA and I'm so glad to be back here with y'all today. And Jim Searcy, you're sort of new to this group, but I tell you what, your three years have been, been good too and we thank you for your efforts. Uh, for EDAA. Y'all just be sure you understand that what you do is so important. Y'all and the work you do are vital to our state. And I'm honored to be here with you today. You are job creators, job seekers. You help me with my number one priority is providing quality jobs, high paying jobs for well trained, well skilled workers. I am just thrilled to death to be with y'all today. And as members of EDAA, each one of you is a leader in your respective area, your region, and what you do certainly is vital to our great state. You all play important roles where you are. Let us remember that leadership is not defined by what we know, but rather by what we do, what we're willing to do with what we know. And since taking office, I've tried to right this ship of state and restore Alabama's image. And what a thrill it was to go to Paris and participate in the Paris Air Show. Just like you do in your professional lives every day, I must understand the real problems that face our great state. And the best leaders among us are those who identify challenges, talk openly about them, and then work diligently to address these challenges as appropriate. That's the approach I try to take as I try to lead this state. Leadership is not about just pointing out when something's not working. It's not enough for leaders to complain, but leaders at your level, the county level, state, region, leaders have to offer solutions. And y'all, I'm just committed to working every day to govern, to make a difference, to face our challenges, and to lead us in finding answers to those challenges. And goodness knows there's no doubt that our state has many challenges facing us, but I tell you what, a steady job, good paying job, goes a long way to solving some of those problems. Encouraging new investment in Alabama and encouraging existing firms to expand, that is the mission and the theme of my administration. And we do this by recruiting 21st century jobs. 21st century jobs. We've done a good job of creating jobs of yesteryear, and we're doing good so far, but y'all, we've got to pick up now and uh, recruit some of these 21st century jobs. And we, this involves my staff, my cabinet, and the governor. I am committed to working with you guys to attracting and locating 21st century jobs. That requires building relationships, some hard work, and a good bit of elbow grease. And that's what I experienced when I went to the uh, Paris Air Show and was pleased to go. I went as a mission. I was there to foster new relationships with firms that are not yet acquainted with Alabama, and also to solidify relationships with firms that are located in Alabama. In fact, Greg, it was 21 appointments you set up, friend. <coughs> In, in, in just two days, I met with 21 global CEOs, three of whom were brand new to Alabama, and 18 were existing firms. And as I listened to the 18 who've, who've been doing business in Alabama tell me about their experience here, no prodding on my part, I just listened as they reported their experiences here in Alabama. And at the end of the day, I realized that what those 18 existing firm CEOs from all over the globe was saying our facility is successful in Alabama because, and I quote, the quality and productivity of our employees. Y'all, that is beautiful news. It's one thing when you and I say it, because we are close to AIDT and workforce development, we, we participate, when we believe it, that's one thing. But to have 18 global CEOs independently say the same thing. 
that is a high mark we can all be proud of. And we must capitalize on that sentiment and build on that relationship because businesses don't just come to Alabama overnight. It takes time. These relationships have to be worked and reworked and continued. My first uh, major push, legislative push, after taking the oath of office um, was the, um, to modify the Alabama Jobs Act. And I want to thank members of EDAA. Y'all worked hard on that bill too. And I thank you for that. Because when we can have good relationships with CEOs and have good sound economic development tools, then we show companies that we are real serious about doing business with them. And I am fully committed to this process and I'm proud to report to you today that uh, some things are working for us. Last week we just announced that our unemployment rate dropped to 4.6 percent and more folks are working today than have in any other time in the last 10 years. That is good news. <laughs> and since I took office, thanks to you, I've been able to announce $1 billion in new investments that are going to create some 4,000 jobs. Thank you for your efforts. Now all of that is good news and we're all proud as punch of it, but let me just tell you that the other side of that is we still have 100,000 folks who want to work and don't have a job. Y'all, these are our neighbors, our friends, folks we know. These are good folks who, who want to work. So we've got a lot more opportunity ahead of us. We've got to attract some more investments so we can have some more 21st century jobs and get these folks up and ready so that they too can be employed. My goal is for every Alabamian who wants to have a job to have one, but not just any job. I want our people to be well-trained, qualified, and well-paid for the jobs they have so they can better provide for themselves and their family and be productive members of the society. As a state, we've made great progress. But folks, 100,000 of our Alabamians, well, our neighbors, want to benefit too, and they deserve to. So we've got that good challenge ahead of us. Our goal is to attract more investment to the state and so that companies will invest in our people and provide good jobs. And as I lead our great state, my quest is to have economic growth in Alabama an everyday occurrence, not the exception. One of the best uh, investments we can make in economic development is in education. Because if we don't have a well-qualified, well-trained workforce, it does not matter what else we do. If our workforce is not trained appropriately, the top companies are not going to come. They'll tell us straight up. So we've got to be sure that we have a well-trained, well-educated workforce. Education acts much like the heartbeat of our state. If our people are educated, they can provide better for themselves and their families and be productive members of our society. Yeah, education is no doubt expensive. We can't just throw money at it. But just like you as economic developers have to be strategic in how you allocate um, financial resources, we must be strategic in how we use our education dollars. That means we should invest our resources in our teachers and make sure that they have all they need to be fully prepared to teach. My goal is for teachers to teach so that students learn and comprehend at high levels. And we should not place unneeded burdens on our teachers for we ought to free them up and so they have time to give each child the attention they need. As a former teacher myself, I was taught in high school, I know the importance of a strong educational foundation. And that's why I'm especially proud of our pre-K or early childhood education program in Alabama and in our recent efforts to coordinate teaching methods from pre to kindergarten to the first, second, and third grade. We've got to start collaboration so that the learning that is done in the pre-year, pre-K, continues through the third grade. 
how well a child reads by the third grade is directly related to how well that child will do later in life. In fact, a student that is not reading at third grade level, at the end of the third grade, is four times less likely to graduate. Four times. And we know that high school dropouts are likely to go to prison. In fact, statistics related to reading proficiency in the third grade are used to determine how many beds will be needed in Alabama prisons. Our children deserve our very best so that they can achieve their very best. And with a strong start, Alabama students are more likely to have a strong finish in the workforce. And I'm a strong advocate for utilizing our state's education system to train our people to be prepared for good paying jobs that are available now and for those that are sure to come. Recently, the Alabama Department of Labor released a study that showed the most in-demand jobs in the coming years are in the following categories. Software and app design, nursing, computer, analyst, uh, computer systems analyzation, physical therapy, and industrial engineering. In fact, friends, they, it, today in Alabama, there are over 4,000 computer-related jobs available here in our state, and we don't have the workers to fill them. These jobs pay an average of $82,000 a year. Our people are not trained in computer science. We must help our, get, help our people to get prepared so that they can excel and in, in get these jobs. Our two-year system, Jeff Lynn and <coughs> Chancellor Baker are doing a good job with our two-year college system, not just to educate our people, but to be ensure, but to ensure that, that they are ready to be productive members of the workforce. We've got a lot to do, but we've got a lot of folks working on it. And just as pre-K is a solid foundation for our children, a robust infrastructure is foundational for all that we do in economic development. And you all know, like I do, that our state's infrastructure is aging. Funds are not there to repair what needs fixing, much less to build new bridges, roads, much less airports and railways. In some places in our state, the school bus has to go at least 12 miles out of its way to avoid going over a dangerous bridge that won't hold them up. Yeah, we have an aged infrastructure in Alabama and it needs attention. In fact, I'll just be very clear to say that we must invest more in our roads and bridges. To invest in our infrastructure is to invest in families, our safety, and we invest in the growth of the state's economy. We cannot wait any longer, folks. Our, our infrastructure needs attention. <clears throat> and I'll share with you that there may be times in your career when you'll be called on to make a decision that um, might not be very popular but you go ahead and make it anyway because it's the right thing to do. Recently, after I took the oath of office and we were in the last half of the second half of the legislative session, I faced a similar predicament. There's no doubt we need to improve our infrastructure, but roads and bridges don't come cheap. So I asked the legislature to generate more revenue by increasing our investment in infrastructure for the first time in 25 years. Now this move was not the most popular one that was ever made, but it was at the time and it is still now the right thing to do for the people of Alabama, our jobs, our safety, our education. It is simply the right thing to do. And I hope that this applause will be translated to our legislators to encourage them to introduce that measure and to let's take advantage of it because I just believe people understand when you need to fix your roads just like you got to fix your roof of your house. It's just that important. Um, 
as leaders, we must see the problems. We must be willing to tackle them, even if it means getting criticism while in the process. Because the moment we sacrifice doing what is right for what is popular, at that moment, we fail to lead. I envision an Alabama where economic opportunity abounds, where our children are well educated and prepared to enter the workforce, and where the wheels of commerce move freely over a well-funded infrastructure system. And I pledge to you today as your governor, I will not be content to maintain status quo. We've steadied the ship of state. Now we will steer it toward sustainability and progress. When my time as governor comes to a close, whenever that may be, I hope to leave this great state better than when I found it because I have not shied away from facing our challenges. I'm honored to be with you today. I'm proud to be your colleague. I love economic development because it means the greatest future for all of our people. We can prepare them for opportunity and they will respond. Thank you all for the work you do and know that what you do at the local level is so vital to our great state. Thank you and may God continue to bless the great state of Alabama.